Another AC season is nearly upon us and with it, some new challenges. Are you ready? Stick around. That's the topic for this edition of The Trainer. Hi, and welcome to the May edition of The Trainer. Have you tried to buy refrigerant lately? Considering the massive demand the Mobile Air Conditioning Society, more commonly known as MAX, has had for reprints of EPA Section 609 certifications, I'm betting many of you have. And if you haven't, you better start looking for yours now. It used to be that you only had to show your Section 609 certification if you wanted to purchase R12. Well, the EPA changed that on January 1st of this year, a new regulation went into effect. It is now required for you to be able to show proof of Section 609 certification to purchase any automotive refrigerant and containers over two pounds in size. And while the new requirement took many of you by surprise, you should have been able to produce your wallet card with no problem. The EPA has required Section 609 certification for anyone servicing an automotive refrigerant system for compensation, that means for any kind of payment, for over 20 years now. Now under the guidelines of this new regulation, it's only required that one individual in your shop holds that Section 609 certification. But remember, any technician in your shop that is going to service the refrigerant circuit, even if they're just performing evacs and recharges, is required to have this certification. Now, it's not difficult or costly to get certified, and there is no requirement for recertification. So you've, if you've ever been certified, you're certainly okay. You can reach out to Max, by the way, if you need help in locating your credentials. However, with that said, there's a lot of great new information about the new refrigerants and best practices that are incorporated into this new certification. It's certainly worth the time and the cost to take the test anyway. Max and ASE are the more popular providers of Section 609 testing, so go visit their websites to learn more. Hey, speaking of new refrigerants, the new kit on the block is R1234YF. Well, he's not so new. He's been around for six or seven years now. What it does mean is that the models that originally came equipped with the new gas are falling out of factory warranty. And that could mean new service opportunities for your shop. And that means new equipment to handle the demand. You'll need an RRR, or Recovery Recycle Recharge Machine, an identifier if one isn't already built into that machine, and a leak detector capable of detecting R1234YF. Now be aware, you'll find offers online that offer you supposedly retrofitted R134A machines so that you can use those in place of the 1234YF machines. That's not the case for several reasons. Number one, foremost, there are certain safety features that are specified by SAE standards for the 1234YF machines. Remember, 1234YF is classified as mildly flammable. The old 134A machines, of course, do not have these features. Second, operation of the machine overall. The 1234YF machines do require a few extra steps in the recovery, recycle, recharge process that aren't gonna be duplicated by the 134A machines. And last, but certainly not least, it's not gonna keep you in EPA compliance. One of the requirements for the EPA under the Clean Air Act is that you must use equipment certified for the system that you're servicing. Now, it's no secret that R1234YF isn't cheap, but the machines will help you safeguard your investment. It does this by requiring a refrigerant identification test prior to recovering the system charge. Now, while we aren't going to be looking at retrofitting 134A systems to 1234YF like we did back in the R12 days, it's a sure bet that do-it-yourselfers and some others are going to save some money by using 134A in the 1234YF systems 
when there's a problem. Now doing so is illegal on a couple of fronts. Number one, it's emissions tampering. You see, the OEMs aren't required to switch over to 1234 YF, at least not quite yet. So when they switched over early, it was to gain emissions credits, carbon credits. So if you go and change your 1234 YF system to 134A, your emissions tampering, and that carries some hefty fines. It's also against the EPA's acceptable use policy. Yeah, 134A is an acceptable refrigerant, but it's not acceptable for use in 1234YF systems. That too can get you in a whole bunch of trouble. So you just might save your customers some money, but it may cost you quite a lot down the road. No matter what type of refrigerant is in the system, there are some common best practices. Let's touch on a few. First is the use of an identifier. Don't assume what kind of mix is in your customers' cars. Recover a contaminated charge and it's like catching the flu. You'll pass that sickness on to every car you service afterwards. Second is leak detection techniques, specifically the use of dye. Oil charges today are small and many are contained in the compressor. It doesn't circulate through the system like it once did, so keep that in mind when you advise your customer. Let them know it may take a few days to reach the leak site and schedule a time for them to return. And make sure you don't overdose the system. It's the same thing as putting too much oil in the engine. That's not a good thing either. Refrigerant charges too are getting smaller and smaller. That means the room for error is getting smaller. Overcharging by even a few ounces can result in higher head pressures in the compressor and that means higher heat loads that lead to premature compressor failure. Undercharge, of course, means less cooling and an uncomfortable customer. Yeah, servicing AC systems is nothing like it was a decade or so ago, and it's getting ready to change some more. There's some new refrigerants being talked about. There's some new system designs already in place. How are you going to keep up? Stick with us. We got you covered, and I'll see you next month.